Hi guys, today's video is going to be a fun one. I'm going to show you how to create custom titles using downloaded fonts. And in this case, I'm actually matching a sticker or a die cut from a collection. Hi, I'm Katie Taylor at scrapandkatie.com where I show you how to preserve your family's memories through the art of scrapbooking. This layout is about one of our trips to New York. We took the kids and we went to the Nike store. Of course, having boys that are full fledged, thrown into sports, they had to make a visit there. And I just think that this five by seven photo of one of the windows just works perfectly with the fresh paint collection from Close to My Heart. So I have some scraps that I'm probably going to try to use. I have some exclusive backgrounds. I have some die cuts that have a portion of the title that I'm going to use. I'm going to be using that awesome and then create another part of the title as well as some of the sticker sheet. Now I am using a sketch from the CDT sketchbook and it doesn't have a full 12 by 12 piece on it. So I'm wanting to cut that down, but I want the majority of this piece that has the yellow with just a little bit of the orange or the nectarine. So I just wanted to show you how I'm cutting that to still keep that ombre look. I am starting with a piece of white daisy cardstock and then adhering down the black speckled as well as that orange and yellow gradient and then using a zip strip up at the top. I'm also going to be using some edge distressing on some of the pattern pieces. You can see here I'm using an old, old edge distresser. A couple of videos ago I showed you how to use your fingers, you can use your scissors, you really can just use whatever you have. Um, just to kind of rough up those edges and it really lends itself really well to this layout because it's kind of got that fresh vibe to it that graffiti look um, you'll be able to see a little bit of that in the photos especially once I bring them out and definitely at the end of this video when I show you the still shots of the layout so behind that five by seven, I am going to mat some of this graffiti heart paper. I'm gonna move it over just a little bit. So it's going to peek out from behind the top left and then I have this bottom right. Now I did decide to go ahead and add 3D foam tape to that five by seven photo and get that adhered down. And then I am going to add the little strip of the heart graffiti behind these two photos of our middle son trying on his basketball shoes that he ended up purchasing at the store. A uh, funny story, um, our youngest son, who's now all into basketball every single weekend traveling, he came and looked over my shoulder while I was making this layout. You know, we talked about what he remembered of this. And the only thing he remembered <laughs> is that his older brother got the basketball shoes and he did not, which I tried to say his foot was growing and he wasn't buying that. So the right side of this layout basically is just the pieces flipped. So I'm going to go ahead and mimic that zip strip and that's just getting adhered on top of that black piece as well as this heart graffiti paper. And the reason I chose that over here, it's going to be a mat for this photo. This is one of my favorite photos of our daughter. You'll be able to see it at the end of this video. But I love how she's just looking out the window at these tall buildings. Now I did decide to use a flip flap. There were just there was one extra photo I wanted to use. And because I attach my flip flaps to the base of my layout and cut my memory protector, it's better to use a flip flap that opens from the top instead of the side. And it's going to allow me to get in there and cut that and then feed that through the cut memory protector. I have inserted a piece of four by six pattern paper and that will be where I journal. So I'm just gonna remove the backing of that flip flap and get that adhered down to my layout base. I also like to take a bone folder just to make sure that that's really adhered down. And I will leave a link down below to a video showing you how I do cut my memory protector in case you wanna use flip flaps like I do. If not, you can just attach them to the top of your memory protector and they work just as fine. 
So I'm going to pull out these exclusive die cuts. This again was a close to my heart collection and this was the scrapbooking kit. So the scrapbooking kits always came with exclusive die cuts, some exclusive pattern paper, and then sometimes some exclusive embellishments. This one did have some cool acrylic, but in the end I pulled them out to use them, but in the end I felt like I just had enough to do the uh, die cuts and the stickers with. So I wanted the awesome down at the bottom. I'm looking at the sticker sheet, trying to figure out, there were some speech bubbles that I wanted to add. So I've done pretty much that. I believe I got a call or something. And so I've attached some without or off camera, but you can see where those went. And then I'm just adding some liquid adhesive and then just going to take some of those die cut stars and just kind of group them around these little um, arrow clusters, the speech bubble. I'm also going to do the same over here to the bottom left of that left layout. This speech bubble is green and although uh, speech bubbles you would think would be a perfect spot to journal, I'm only going to journal up at the top right, that blue one next to that photo of my daughter that I really, really like. So I'm pulling out my sticker sheet. I'm adding some additional stars. I'm trying to keep the colors of the stars where you have like one of each around those little groupings. So I'm trying not to have a whole lot of the same color, if you will. And I think I was able to get that done just by using the die cuts and the sticker sheet. There are a couple of word stickers. I ended up only using one. Um, on there and it's take it easy. And then I found this zip strip that said happy. So I just cut one of the happies off of there trying to figure out where I want that. And I end up putting it on the speech bubble. I really liked it by the two, three by fours, but hindsight 2020. Okay, so for the first part of my title, I want it to match the awesome that was part of the die cuts that came with the fresh paint kit. So I am going to go to defont.com and I know based on what that font looks like, I want it to be a brush font. I tried graffiti um, before recording and I really didn't find anything. So to cut through all the BS, I'm just showing you that you search for brush or if you know what kind of, you know, like if you are trying to duplicate a floral, just search for whatever you want. I like defont.com because it has a lot of free fonts and it also gives you the option to donate to the author of the font once you find it. I also like defont.com. Um, some others might do this. I'm not really sure because I only do defont, but you can type in what you want to see typed. So you can see here that I've already searched and I my title for that portion is going to be NYC Nike Store. And then I am going to just go ahead and expand this and then submit. And it's going to show me all the fonts that have that brushed look. And it's also going to show me what my title is going to look like in there. So originally I wanted, you can see that I actually typed it in um, a variation of um, caps and then lowercase. I originally wanted it that way because that awesome is that way. Um, even though they're all, all large letters, the E in awesome is a lowercase letter. But after searching the majority of these, um, I just didn't feel like it gave me the same S, the same E, so on and so forth. So I did end up going with an all caps title or an all caps font. So once you find that font, all you're going to do is come over here and you're going to download it to your compu computer and then you're going to unzip it. Now, there are a couple of ways that you can go about printing or cutting this. I decided to just print it using my printer and then I'm going to fussy cut it out. It's a large enough title that I don't mind doing that. But you could also... Um, use your Cricut if you wanted to. And on that, once you download it to your computer, you're just going to tell your Cricut that you want to use your computer's font. So I'm going to click on that and then I am going to type what I want. 
The good thing about using your Cricut is because in my mind, I know how large I want that title to be. And so it's easy to resize in your Cricut. The only bad thing is that this font, you can see here, um, if you're going to cut it, then it's going to have, because it's a brush font, it's going to have a lot of holes in it. And so you really don't want that. So you're going to have to do a print then cut. So this title is going to span two pages. So I want to separate that. And then I can bring this over. And I want it about nine inches. Let's do eight and a half. That should work. And then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to change that to um, print then cut. And I'm going to change it to black. And then I want to create um, an offset. And that way, because my Cricut is cutting it, it's basically going to be that sticker look like the awesome title was. My favorite is 0 .8, 0 .08 rather, and I prefer the, the curved corner. Okay, so it has applied the offset, and so, and so before I make the offset white, I want to make sure that it's touching everywhere. So you can see here that these letters are touching so that means it's going to cut it as one piece. Over here is the only one that's really not. But I think I can live with that. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to make the offset white. And then I am going to capture both of these. And I am going to attach them. And then that way it's going to print and then cut it. Like I said earlier, because I'm going to fussy cut this out, it's an easy font. I just actually typed it into a Word document and I'm going to print that on cardstock and then fussy cut this out using about the same border as the was on the awesome. So you can see I'm just going around there on the letters and then I am going to need to cut some of these little pieces out. So the easiest way to do that is get a hole punch, punch a hole into the part you want to cut out and it allows you to get the tip of your scissors into that hole and then you can work yourself out to the edges. And it's a whole lot better than trying to poke your scissors through there, which can be dangerous, ask me how I know. Um, and then I'm going to kind of clean this up, um, the store. There was just a little bit too much white between the R and the E. I am going to leave the O simply because in the word awesome, there was some white space in that one. So again, I wanna mimic that. And then I do end up coming back in the end and getting rid of some of the white space on the S. So you'll have to see that in the still shots. Um, I don't do that on camera. I end up having to take an X-Acto knife because I am adhering 3D foam tape to the back of these. So let's pick this up and just take a look. Um, I'm gonna try to put the NYC Nike down by the awesome. There is a slight variation in color, but overall I really am pleased with how well I was able to mimic that awesome title, plus get that extra photo under there using the flip flap. Now I don't have um, a link to the fresh paint. Um, I do have a link down to how to cut your memory protector. And then also you'll be able to like, comment, share with your friends and follow um, this channel by subscribing and signing up for notifications. And I just wanna thank y'all so much for stopping by and watching. I hope y'all have a wonderful rest of your week.